Hey guys, so today we have just a classic faves and fails video. I feel like it's been a while since I've done one of these videos. I did my end of the year 2022 favorites, but that was more of a yearly favorites. And there's just been a lot of products recently that I've discovered that I have just been using over and over again. And I have a couple of things that I have really not been impressed with that I'll also share today. So I have a mix of makeup, skincare, hair care, just a little bit of everything. So let's start with Let's start with a skincare product, actually. This I've been testing out for a while now, probably a few months at this point, but it's the Paula's Choice Calm 1% BHA Sensitive Skin Exfoliant. So they did come out with this new Calm line, or it's kind of like their revamped Calm line uh, a couple of months ago. I think it was in collaboration with Gothamista. And so far, all of the things from that line I've really enjoyed, but this to me is the standout product especially if you have sensitive skin. I really haven't been able to use BHA exfoliants at all really since I started using tretinoin because it's pretty hard to find BHA exfoliants with just 1% salicylic acid. Most of the time they have 2%. And I used to love the Paula's Choice 2% BHA exfoliants in the past, but lately I just haven't been using those because it's just more than my skin can really tolerate. But this really just feels like a hydrating serum. It doesn't sting my skin at all. I use it on nights when I'm not using my tretinoin because I don't want to use them together. I think that would, I, I think that's generally not a good idea. But you can see, it really just feels like a hydrating serum. It has this kind of milky texture. It leaves behind like a nice plump, glowy feeling on your skin. And... I haven't noticed any irritation with this whatsoever, but I do feel like it does what I would want a BHA to do, which would be to just kind of smooth out my skin, unclog my pores. I would say I use it probably just about once a week. That's really all I feel like I need, but it's nice to be able to finally incorporate an exfoliant back into my routine because it's just been so long and I really did miss the benefits of BHA exfoliants. So really happy to have discovered this. Getting into some makeup favorites now, I recently picked up a few new drugstore products and I've been loving all of them actually. So the first one is this Physician's Formula Butter Believe It Foundation. It says foundation plus concealer. I just use it as a foundation. This is definitely the fullest coverage foundation that I own. It's the fullest coverage foundation I've tried in a long time. And I usually don't go for full coverage foundations because I, I mean, I don't really feel like I need full coverage most of the time, or I don't, I, I'm usually happy with medium coverage. But to me, this has the same kind of lightweight, comfortable feel of a lot of my favorite medium coverage foundations, but it just has a little bit more coverage. So I would actually say this reminds me a lot of the ColourPop Pretty Fresh foundation. Similar just look on the skin, similar finish, that kind of satin but slightly radiant finish, but the ColourPop Pretty Fresh foundation is more medium coverage, and I would say this is more medium to full. I'm really impressed by just how well this covers my skin without looking heavy at all. Uh, this is what I have on my skin today, and I mean, I feel like my skin looks really nice. Even if I don't have like a lot to cover, it's kind of just nice to get that really even, perfected look on the skin. It's a little bit smoothing as well. It does have that classic butter bronzer sort of scent. If, you're, if you've ever tried the butter bronzer, you know that sort of tropical, coconutty sort of scent. It does have that scent, but to me, at least for my memory, it's not as strong as what the butter bronzer smells like. And I don't notice it on my skin once I've blended it in. It doesn't really linger, at least to me. But yeah, I'm happy to have this in my arsenal now because I didn't really have any high coverage foundations up until now. And it's just nice to have for whenever I want to go for a slightly more glam look. I like that I have that option, but it also, I, I can trust that it's not going to look bad. I, every single time I've worn this, it has looked amazing on my skin. You know, sometimes foundations will look amazing some days and then other days they look weird. Maybe you paired them with a different sunscreen one day or a different primer and it just acts differently, but this always looks good. So I, I love a consistent foundation, one that I can trust, and that is how I feel about this one. So really happy with that. And I wear the shade Fair in this. Speaking of like base products and sunscreen products, I've recently been trying some K-Beauty skincare from Yes Style. Just about everything I've tried I've really liked so far, but I have two really standout favorites. First is this sunscreen. This is the Aromatica Soothing Aloe Mineral Sunscreen with SPF 50. It says SPF 50 plus. PA++++, which I think is the highest PA rating. So this is a mineral sunscreen. It does have a slight sort of herbal scent. Doesn't really seem to bother my skin. Uh, sort of, yeah, just a, like a light, almost lavender sort of scent. 
I do wish it were fragrance free, but it doesn't really seem to bother my skin. This is so nice. This is one of the best mineral sunscreens that I've tried. It reminds me actually a lot of the Kapari Antioxidant Face Shield with SPF 30, which I finished uh, like a couple months ago. I really liked that one, but it was very expensive, especially for the amount that you get. And it only had SPF 30. This has SPF 50, but to me it behaves a lot like that sunscreen. It's very lightweight. It is very hydrating and it does leave a glowy finish on your skin, but it's not its not too much. It's not greasy glowy. It's very lightweight. It doesn't feel heavy on my skin. And the best thing about it is that the white cast is very, very minimal. As you're blending it in, you do see a little bit of that white cast, but once it has blended in and had a few minutes to sink in, I don't see any white cast on my skin tone. Now, that's coming from someone with very fair skin. I'm not sure how it would work on deeper skin tones, but... Most mineral sunscreens are going to have at least some white cast. I was just looking and it actually seems like this is no longer available on YesStyle. I don't know if it's um, just out of stock on there, but it is available on a few other websites. I hope they bring it back on YesStyle, but yeah, it's really rare to find a mineral sunscreen that I enjoy this much. Mineral sunscreen, good mineral sunscreens, very hard to come by. This one, I think I could wear just about every day and I would be happy. But I am in the process of testing a bunch of K-Beauty sunscreens. Some of them I haven't even tested yet. Um, and I've liked just about every one that I've tried so far, uh, but this year's sunscreen roundup, which will be coming up in the spring, will be all about K-Beauty sunscreens. But let's just say I've been missing out. <laughs> Most of the K-Beauty sunscreens I've tried are better than any American sunscreen that I've ever tried. So really excited about that. But this one definitely is the standout so far. Another K-Beauty skincare product is from this brand Beauty of Joseon. I think this brand has been getting a lot more hype recently on social media, but this is their Radiance Cleansing Balm. Oh my gosh. Okay, this, I don't mean to be dramatic, but this is the best cleansing balm I have ever used. The way that it spreads on the skin is so soothing and satisfying. It goes on so smoothly. It does emulsify once you add water, which is a must for me. Rinses off very well with water, re removes all my makeup. And the other thing with this is I feel like once I've washed my face after using this, my skin feels even more soft and hydrated than usual. And I do attribute that to this because I feel like it, it was once I started using this that I noticed that, but I didn't change anything else about my routine. This is so good. Also, the packaging is so beautiful. I love how minimal it is. I love that I can just lift up the top and not have to twist it off. Very, very nice. My favorite fragrance at the moment, I finally purchased a, not a full size, but a larger size of the Clean Reserve Skin fragrance. I used to have a little tiny like rollerball sample of this last year, and I loved it so much. It has been on my wish list ever since I used that one up. And in, I guess in the most recent Sephora sale, I think it was like their holiday, the 20% the off sale they had around the holidays, I decided to get the travel size because it actually does have a sprayer instead of a roller ball. I was going to get the full size, but the full size is $100. <laughs> and this travel spray was actually pretty reasonable. Yeah, the travel spray was $29, so um, I guess I got it for like $25 with the discount. But um, this way I'll be able to use it more and, you know, sometimes with scents I get kind of tired of them after a while, so I felt like this would be a good way to have a slightly larger size and then make sure that I really, really like it by the time I'm done with this and then I could get the full size. But I don't think I'm going to get tired of this scent. This is such, such a nice scent. It's very clean smelling, but it also has this warm, like very comforting, almost musk sort of undertone to it. Key notes are ambrette seeds, pear nectar, and liquid musk. Yeah, so it's kind of like a cross between this clean, almost citrusy sort of scent, and then this warm musk amber sort of undertone. Oh, so good. Whenever I wear this, I cannot stop like smelling my wrists. Amazing. <laughs> I, it's so hard to like get across, it's so hard to describe scents and to get across like what I like about it, but if you if you ever get a chance to get a sample of this, I think Clean Reserve does sell like a sampler pack where you could try a few of their scents. I would like to get my hands on that at some point because this is the only Clean Reserve scent that I've ever smelled as far as I can remember, but yeah, I would have to say that that is my current favorite scent. This and Pinrose Pillow Talk Poet I think are my top two scents of all time. 
but it's so hard to pick. I have so many favorites, but this is definitely my current favorite, and I think this is a great year-round scent. All right, I'm just kind of going in random order here. Here's a fail, a definite fail. This is from Kristen S. I recently bought a, quite a few Kristen S. products. I mean, I guess three. <laughs> Felt like a lot because I had never tried the brand before. But this is their Scalp Purifying Micellar Shampoo. Deep cleansing, shine boosting, scalp hydrating, <laughs> removes buildup, and strand fortifying is what it says. This, okay, so I'm. this is supposed to be sort of a clarifying shampoo. So it's definitely the kind of thing that you would only use like as needed. But I don't even want to use it as needed because it makes my hair so incredibly dry. Just the driest ever. Most clarifying shampoos are going to be a little bit drying to the strands, but this just makes my hair feel and look so stringy and like, it, it just like, I don't even like to touch my hair when I've used this because it feels, oh, like it's, it just feels almost like it's coated in something. Um, I don't know if that's really what it is or if that's just how dry it feels, but I do not recommend this. Um, I did recently purchase the Suave Daily Clarifying Shampoo, which I've heard a lot of good things about. And I haven't tried the Suave one yet because I've been using another shampoo just about every time I've washed my hair, which I'll talk about in just a second, that I've been just loving. Um, but hopefully the Suave one is better than this. I'll definitely report back once I've tried that one and let you know if it's, if it's better in terms of the dryness. Recently, I have just been using this shampoo nonstop. This is the Dove dryness and itch relief anti-dandruff shampoo so if you've been here a while you know i do have like seborrheic dermatitis aka dandruff <laughs> um it's very very sexy i know and it has been a struggle especially since we moved to seattle we have very soft water here and we had soft water where we lived before but i think it's even softer here and usually soft water like that you want soft water you don't want hard water but something about the, the water here, my scalp has just been flakier than ever before. And this shampoo, even just using it one time, like the, the first time I used it, I immediately noticed a difference. I've just been using this pretty much every time I've washed my hair. I did use another shampoo once in between using this and my scalp got flaky again. So I think I'm just going to use this like consistently every time because I've noticed a huge difference not only in the flakiness but also in just how my scalp doesn't feel itchy anymore and it's almost like I didn't realize that it felt itchy before because I was just so used to it but this just feels so soothing to my scalp and most anti-dandruff shampoos that I've tried and I've tried quite a few most of them leave my hair feeling very dry this one I, it doesn't dry my hair out at all. Uh, I just follow it up with a nice, you know, just regular conditioner and I feel like my hair is shiny, it is smooth, it's soft, it's less frizzy, and it smells really good too. Another thing about a lot of anti-dandruff shampoos is that they don't smell great or they kind of leave behind like a weird smell in your hair. This one doesn't smell weird at all. It's, it smells really good actually. It's very clean and fresh. Okay, just a few more things to talk about. While we're on the subject of hair, I wanted to share this. So this is from Koki. I didn't even know that Koki made hair tools, but this is their Volume and Shine blowout brush. So it's basically just, you know, a hair drying round brush. And I love this. <laughs> this is what I used today. Anytime you see my hair more like blow dried straight like this, this is what I use. I'll usually use it once my hair is already dry or mostly dry. I don't like to use this on wet hair because I've heard that that can just not be great for your hair to use any kind of like hot tool like this on wet hair. So I wait for my hair to either be completely dry or almost completely dry when I use this and I always use a heat protectant as well. I used to have the Amica round brush, and that one was nice. Very expensive though. This one is a lot cheaper than that one. This one is $40. I think the Amica one is close to $100. Yeah, the Amica one is $100, and it was good, but not like $100 good. I actually like this one better. It's not quite as big as the Amica one. It's still pretty big, and I do have pretty long hair. I think this is the medium size, and then they also make a larger size, but to me, the medium is great, and I do have quite long hair. I need to get it cut soon. Like, yeah, that's how long my hair is. <laughs> it's gotten very long. And I feel like this size works great for my hair, but I also feel like if I had shorter hair, it'd work well too. But what I love about this is just how smoothly it goes through my hair. Like it 
just glides through. It doesn't feel like it's tugging or pulling or like yanking at my hair at all. It just glides through so easily. It leaves my hair looking just like extra shiny and smooth. And um, I think it has like two different kinds of bristles. It has these longer kind of more plasticky bristles with a little nub on the end. And then it has the natural style bristles that are shorter than that to really like kind of get in there and grip your strands. Compared to the Amica one, I actually like this one better. I feel like it it feels like it goes through my hair even more smoothly and also it's really cute like the rose gold and the pink how cute is that so really happy with that i think you can only get this on koki's website though maybe if you have koki in stores near you you might be able to find it but yeah they did send this to me in pr but i'm really happy that i had the chance to try it because it is just it's so good i also like i cannot do a hair dryer and a round brush like i can't hold the hair dryer and and brush my hair at the same time that's impossible for me so something like this if i'm gonna be blow drying my hair at all something like this just makes a lot more sense last few things i have a couple of eyeshadow favorites um one that i'm wearing on my eyes today this is the wet n wild color icon 10 pan palette in the shade call me sunshine so i don't know about you but this reminds me a lot of the urban decay naked honey palette which i used to have a long time ago decluttered it and then i kind of regretted decluttering it but now i don't regret decluttering it at all because now i have this and to me this is even better than Naked Honey. First of all, I like the size of these pans so much better. I, I really don't like those narrow rectangular pans in the Urban Decay palettes. This is just so much easier to work with. But also just the quality of these shades, the shimmers especially, feel so buttery and smooth. It had been so long since I tried Wet n Wild shadows and I, I've always been a fan of their shadows. Like they've always made some of the best eyeshadows at the drugstore. And they've also managed to keep their prices pretty low. I think this palette is $6. To me, the most the most special shade in this palette is this one right here. This is what I have on my lid today. It is the most just sparkly duochrome. Like, look at that. That shade looks so expensive to me. Like, that looks like something out of a high-end palette. Not a single dud shade in this palette that I've experienced. All of the shimmers feel very buttery and smooth. The mattes are really easy to work with. Yeah, it seems like since I last tried Wet n Wild, they've stepped up their eyeshadow formula even more. So I'm excited to see what else they have. If anyone has any other Wet n Wild eyeshadow favorites, I know they have some five pans too that I'd be interested in. But this color story just spoke to me so much, especially because I had just been talking about how I wish I still had Naked Honey. Having tried both, I think this is better than Naked Honey. Formula-wise and just color story-wise, I just think the colors in here are more interesting. The fact that it has a duochrome in it, when I don't think Naked Honey had any duochromes in it, that alone is like enough to make this more interesting to me. Another Wet n Wild favorite, this is the other thing from Wet n Wild that I picked up and I've also been loving it. All three of these new products I picked up have been total winners. This is the, I guess kind of like the revamped version of the Mega Last lipsticks. They used to have a lot more like just simple packaging, but now it's actually a lot nicer looking even though the prices are still really low. $3.29 for these lipsticks. Unbelievable. So this, to me, this is kind of like the e.l.f. Seriously Satin lipsticks, the formula. Maybe a little bit more matte, but the packaging is way nicer than the e.l.f. ones, and I love this color. I had just been talking about how I was looking for a good, light, cooler toned nude, and then I found this one, and it's pretty much exactly what I was looking for. It's just, it's about the same depth as my natural lip color, so it really is like a true nude in that sense, and I really like to pair this kind of color with a light brownish lip liner which my favorite is the Koki Lip Liner in Nude, of course, and that is what I have on today underneath this. But yeah, this is just like my perfect My Lips But Better. It's almost like the lipstick version of the Milani Lip Plumper in Soft Rose, that lip gloss that I love. It's kind of, it's a really similar tone to that. I don't have that in my collection right now, but it reminds me a lot of that, and that is my kind of nude color. I love it. So yeah, honestly can't believe that these are only $3. Let me know if you have any other favorite shades in this line because the formula also is very nice. It's definitely matte, which I like. I like a matte bullet lipstick. 
it doesn't feel drying. I mean, if your lips are really chapped, then you probably aren't gonna wanna wear a matte lipstick. But as long as your lips are well prepped, as you're applying your makeup, you know, maybe put on like a lip balm just to sort of prep them. And then once you're ready to apply this, take the lip balm off and it will be smooth and creamy. Really, I mean, even though it is matte, it doesn't like tug at all. Feels a lot more expensive than it is, definitely, especially with this new upgrade to the packaging. Okay, my last favorite, and then I have one more fail. The new Nomad Verona palette. If you saw my three looks one palette with this, then you already kind of heard my thoughts on this. But I was not expecting to like this color story. And I had never tried Nomad's formula before. But first of all, very impressed with the formula. This is one of the easiest to work with colorful palettes that I've ever tried. The colorful shades, I mean, they are very bright and saturated and pigmented. But at the same time, they you, you don't have to work very hard to blend them out. They're very agreeable shadows. <laughs> like, they just cooperate. And it's very nice. Very, very nice to have that, especially with, with such bright colors. You don't have to deal with, like, a difficult-to-work-with formula. So I really appreciate that. And the shimmers in here are stunning. I actually have this shade on my lower lash line a little bit and my inner corner. And actually, a technique favorite I wanted to mention is applying a shimmer like this, like this sort of sparkly shimmer, just applying that to the center of my lower lash line. I feel like that just opens up my eyes so much. I've been doing that a lot lately. I would say that shade is probably my favorite shade in the whole palette. It's this silver to gold duochrome. Oh, look at that. Also, this shade down here, it kind of just looks like a purple, but it's actually so dimensional. Like, it has this sort of gold green shift that I feel like the camera just doesn't pick up, but I promise. <laughs> like, can you see that sort of shift to that shade? Really fun. A lot of the shades in here, I can say, like, I don't have anything like that in my collection. Like, I don't have anything like that shade in my collection. I really don't have anything like most of these shades in my collection. I didn't have many, like, hot pinks and bright reds. But um, I think I'm going to be having a lot of fun with this side, especially around Valentine's Day. And then this side, the cool tones, even though they're very cool and gray, they blend into my skin really nicely. I think it's nice that it has this kind of dusty, rosy mauve shade down here in the cool tone side because that kind of helps a lot of these other shades blend more naturally into my skin tone. Um, but even the grays in here, I feel like they still, even though gray can look kind of odd sometimes as an eyeshadow, they they just look good. <laughs> like, they look good on my eyes. Um, I also, another thing, I don't feel like I have any, like, rich navy blue shadows in my collection. And this shade down here, Poison, beautiful navy blue. It shows up true to color on the eyes. Like, it doesn't go on just looking like a dark gray or black. Like, it, it actually looks like a true navy and I just think that is rare. All the mattes in here are like very true to color. Like what you see in the pan is what you get on your eyes, which I really appreciate. So yeah, this is my first time trying Nomad and I'm very, very impressed. I wish I had tried them sooner. I didn't even realize that I was missing out until now. So yeah, really, really happy with that palette. Um, what else, what else? Okay, one more fail. And this isn't like a huge fail, but I wouldn't recommend it. This is the Rimmel Scandalized Mascara. I know this has been out for years, but uh, I recently tried this. I've actually been trying this for a couple months now, and it just doesn't wow me at all. It claims to be volumizing, and it is not volumizing at all. Like, up close, my lashes look nice and long, but from from a distance, they don't, like, they don't stand out, and that's really what I look for in a volumizing mascara is for my lashes to really look dramatic and for them to stand out from a distance. And I just feel like you, like my lashes are just kind of there. Like it just kind of coats my lashes, but it doesn't really do any favors for them. And it's also a little bit flaky. Sometimes I get um, flakes down under my eyes at the end of the day. And even like you can see like, there's like flakes around the edge. Like it was kind of flaky just even the first time I used it. So. I don't know if anyone was wondering about this mascara, but I I just don't, I don't love it. Um, I don't love it. So I will be using it up, but then definitely not buying it again. Also, the brush is so big. Like, okay, I don't, 
I used to not mind a big brush, but lately I've really come to appreciate a smaller, just more manageable brush. This is just so, like, unwieldy. Look at how, like, this brush is like the same size as my pinky here. Look at that. And I always end up getting it on my eyelids. Today I got it, like, on my nose as I was applying it. It's just so big. And I don't understand why it needs to be this big. You know, I don't see any good reason for it to be this big. Like, most people are going to have a hard time working with this brush. Not really loving that. So those are all of my current favorites and just just two fails this time, so not too bad. Mostly favorites. I, yeah, I was just really excited about these products and I felt like I hadn't really had a chance to talk about them in a video yet, most of them, but those are just the products that I've been really excited about using lately. But thank you all so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you had fun. If you did, be sure to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and I will talk to you very soon in my next video. Bye.